When Carl Sagan was a teenager with a passion for aliens and science fiction, few people could have predicted he would become an astronomer, cosmologist, author, and advocate for science. Even beyond his major scientific discoveries, like his work in measuring the surface temperature of Venus and putting together the first messages that were sent into space, Carl Sagan helped us to understand the wonder of our planet and our species. The nitrogen in our DNA, the calcium in our teeth, the iron in our blood, the carbon in our apple pies were made in the interiors of collapsing stars. We are made of star stuff. Science is an empowering force in our lives. Carl Sagan explained, We live in a society exquisitely dependent on science and technology. Our species needs and deserves a citizenry with minds wide awake and a basic understanding of how the world works. Even though science is defined as the state or fact of knowing, it's actually much cooler than that. Science is a powerful tool that you use probably more often than you realize. From knowing when and how much force to apply to the brakes of your car, to knowing how much sugar you can put into your coffee. You're using science all the time. So, how will you use science today? Carl Sagan was an advocate of applying something called the scientific method, which lies at the heart of all scientific innovations. It starts with a question, that yearning to learn something new about our world. As Carl Sagan once famously put, there are naive questions, tedious questions, ill-phrased questions, but every question is a cry to understand something about our world. There's no such thing as a dumb question. So what questions do you have today? Do alligators have vocal cords? What kind of plants will grow best in my garden? Where can we find threatened or endangered birds? Research and observation is the next step of the scientific method. No major scientific discovery has ever been published successfully without the trial and error required by the scientific method. Let's say your car breaks down and you want to fix it. You first ask yourself, what's wrong? You do some research, and then you make a guess about what's causing the problem. You act on your hunch, fixing a part or refilling some fluids, and then you test your car to see if it works. Afterwards, if your car still doesn't work, you analyze your result and try again, fixing something else. Depending on your level of expertise, it may take a few times to fix your car. However, it's always important for you to publish your findings afterwards so that people with the same problem can get back on the road. Congratulations! You've just used the scientific method. So if you can use the scientific method to fix your car, what else can you use it for? Once you've seen the power of using the scientific method to solve almost any problem, you can let your imagination run wild. Let's see what questions scientists are asking today. What fundamental question does your research address? How can I discover new classes of drugs that stop HIV infection and cancer progression? How can I build molecules that absorb light? How can we make inexpensive, disposable, paper-based sensors to detect ions in blood? How can I get accurate structures of molecules? How can I find bioactive compounds from fungi that live inside of plant tissue? 
Whatever questions we ask, our experience will be constrained by the scientific laws. For example, the laws of conservation of matter. The laws of thermodynamics. And the laws of gravity. Hmm. That was a close one. These laws are explained by scientific theories. Scientific theories are powerful combinations of scientific observations. For example, Dalton's atomic theory explains the conservation of matter, and Einstein's theory of relativity explains the laws of gravity. Moreover, Darwin's theory of evolution describes how all species of organisms arise and develop through the natural selection of small, inherited variations that increase the individual's ability to compete, survive, and reproduce. There is no higher form of knowledge than a scientific theory, which is the cumulative product of the scientific method. So if Dalton could imagine that all matter is made up of tiny, inconceivably small particles, and Einstein could imagine the curvature of space-time, what will you imagine next? What burning question of yours will change the world?